Hey guys, I was doing this problem in a past session and it got a little bit crazy. So I've organized everything and we'll walk through it here. So this problem says, suppose that A and B are both five by five matrices and that their inverses both exist. So that basically is telling us that you can multiply them together and that will be fine. Their inverses both exist. You can multiply the inverses together and that's all fine. Next, it says, let C be the matrix product of A times B. So C equals A times B, and that's going to be really important. <clears throat> Which of the following statements is definitely true? So we're going to have to go through here and test if each of these statements are true or not in order to narrow down our options. And this was definitely one of the most difficult problems I could find. It uses a lot of matrix theory. So hope this makes sense you can follow along my approach here is going to be thinking about what sort of math fact can i use to start testing these options so we're going to want to be testing if these different options so like a inverse b inverse is equal to c inverse and as you notice that we have c inverse here every single time so we probably want to use some sort of math fact that uses c inverse in it so let's go review some of the matrix rules or facts. The first one I have here is that something multiplied by its inverse equals the identity. Oops. So X times its inverse equals the identity. And that will stem from in normal math, if you were to take a fraction or a number, say one on five, and you just want to flip a fraction, so that's like saying five over one, the inverse of that's going to be one over five. And if you were to multiply those two things together, you'd get five over five, which is the same thing as one. So anything times its inverse is equal to one. In the matrix world, the identity matrix is like a one. Our next rule is that anything multiplied by the identity is going to be itself. So like x times the identity equals x, or if we had identity times x, that'll also equal x. So anything times the identity is going to equal itself, which is also like from normal math, if you were to have 5 times 1, that's going to still equal 5. Our next rule is that matrix multiplication is not commutative. So if we had A times B times C, you could not just flip A and B and try to do A times B, sorry, try to do B times A times C, or flip it again and try to do A times C. You can't flip things around in matrix multiplication. They have to stay in the exact same order. And then building off of that, let's say if you did have several things like that to multiply, sorry, then as long as the order of those things stays the same, you can compute them however you want. So if we had A times B times C, you could take A times B first and then multiply that by C. Or you can take B times C first and then multiply that by A. So it doesn't matter which group of things you pick to do first, as long as the original order of A, B, and C stays the same. So these are gonna, gonna these are the rules that we're gonna be using in the problem. All right, so back to the problem. We'll start by testing A here. And as I said earlier, we probably wanna use a fact that has C inverse in it. So we can use this as a testing method. So one of the facts we had was that anything times its inverse equals the identity matrix. So we were we could write C times C inverse equals I. And that is a mathematical fact. Another mathematical fact given in the problem is that C equals a B. So I can come over here and plug in A times B for C. Copy the rest of this down. And this is still a mathematical fact. Uh, 
All right, now we're ready to plug in and test this up here. So we're gonna move to a test. So now we are no longer working with facts. We're trying to test if this is true or not. So if this were true, you would be able to plug in A inverse times B inverse for C inverse. So if that's true, we'll try it. We're gonna plug in that for the C inverse we had in our equation. So A inverse times B inverse. And then I'm gonna copy the rest of that down. All right, so now we're gonna think, is there a way for us to make this side be the identity matrix just as it is on this side. And since we're testing that, I'm gonna leave a little question mark above that equation sign. So let's think about how we would need this to look in order to get an identity. So, and over here, we're just kind of thinking. So I'm gonna make it a thought bubble. So I don't think that this is just like part of the problem. But let's say we had those four things and we want it to be the identity matrix. We would need to have those four things grouped similar to this, where we had the A next to the A inverse and the B next to the B inverse. It could be sort of any flip of this, like you could have B inverse times B, it doesn't matter, as long as the groups of A and A inverse and B and B inverse are next to each other then you'd be able to come over here and say, well, this is gonna equal the identity. And this is gonna equal the identity. So we just picked those two groups to do first. And now we have identity times identity and anything times the identity is gonna be itself. So anything times the identity is gonna equal itself. Which is what we're looking for, for these four things to equal the identity. In order for this to happen, we have to have those things next to each other in that sort of grouping. And as we said before, matrix multiplication is not commutative. So we can't come over here and just start moving things around. I'd have to somehow group the existing order into a way where I could get an identity to pop up out of there. And there's really no way to do that. Even if you were to multiply like B times A inverse, now we have some random matrix that we're not gonna be able to do anything else with anyway. So there's no way for us to take this and turn it into an identity. So basically what we tried to do here with taking this C inverse times A inverse B inverse and plugging it in to test if we could, that would still be a mathematical fact did not work. That's not a mathematical fact. So this is not true which means that this swap we tried to make with the C inverse and this from A, that did not work, so this is not true. All right, let's move on to the next one. Oh, actually, I'm gonna leave a lot of that. So the next one, I'm just gonna delete this part. The next one's still in the same portion where we have the C inverse, I mean, we probably wanna use that in a mathematical fact, which we already did. So I also am gonna leave this step here where we plugged in A times B for C because we can still use that. And then we're just gonna do a different test this time. So this time we are going to be testing if C inverse equals A times B inverse. So I'm gonna plug that in here. And if it helps to write the multiplication signs out, feel free to go ahead and do that. And then I'll copy the rest down. And just like last time, we have the same four, actually no, we don't, we now have two A's actually. And we need to figure out a way for that to equal I. We can't move them around, neither if we did, we have two A's, so those would never cancel each other out into being an I. So this is never gonna work. So we went from a mathematical fact to a mathematical false. 
So that means that this substitution with this inverse into A times B inverse also did not work. Okay, so let's get rid of that test and we're gonna try option C. So option C says that C inverse equals B inverse times A inverse. So let's plug that in there. And then I'll copy the rest down. And then we're gonna test if this is still true. So do you see where we can convert some of this into being an identity? As we said, anything times its inverse is the identity. So we have B times B inverse, which means that that's gonna equal an identity. And then I'll copy the rest down. And our equation will keep going. Another one of our rules is that anything times the identity is gonna be itself. So you could take A times I, or you could take I times A inverse, doesn't matter, it'll be itself. So let's say I wanted to take, I don't know, I'll take I times A inverse for fun. I times A inverse is gonna be A inverse. And then I'll copy the rest down. And here we're back to that same rule. So we have A times its inverse. That means that that is gonna equal I. And I'll copy the rest down, which here we now have I equals I. And that is indeed a true fact. It has to equal itself. So that means that this was true. So what we did here of trying to take C inverse and plug in that test here that worked, this was true. So that means that this is true as well up here. So our answer is gonna be option C. Um, and the answer is option C because D says that answers A and B are both right. They're both wrong. E says that answers A and C are both right. Well, C is right, A is not right. So they're not both right. And then F says that answers A, B and C are all right. Well, A and B are not, so that's not correct either. So what you actually could have done is after you tested A and B and found that those two are both wrong, you could also have crossed out D, E, and F, and then you're left with C and just circled that. But it is good to come down here and make sure that's true. So I hope that all made sense. Um, if you're feeling something like this on the test, which I hope you're not because it's kind of hard, think about what kind of mathematical fact you can start with and then substitute in here to test these things. So we needed to substitute these different things for C inverse. So we started with a mathematical fact that had C inverse in it. it the problem was written so that we would do that. And that's why they gave us that C has to equal A times B. So that we were able to plug in this portion here. And then now whenever you plug in any of these, you'll be able to try and manipulate them into getting I like we did for that last test. So I hope that all made sense. Um, feel free to put questions in my group me or you can email me at ryanba at ie.edu um, and then come to our past review, review sessions for the final. But good luck, hope that helped.